Yo, what is going on guys? You got Glop, and today I'm bringing you something a little bit different. Uh, we're actually going to be reviewing a new tournament series that I'm entering. This is the TADT, otherwise known as the Team Apex Draft Tournament. Uh, so this is taking place in a Discord called Team Apex. And for those who aren't familiar with what a draft tournament is, uh, essentially you're thrown into a group with different coaches, and you all basically go down the line and you pick Pokemon based on their point value. Uh, so you're allotted X amount of points for your team, and you go through and just make your picks. Uh, so you can see here, this is the pool that I was in. Uh, doesn't quite show everybody, but uh, basically this is how it went down. And you can see that I've got a roster here of Tornadus T, Tapu Bulu, Rotom Heat, Agron Mega, Latias, Gastrodon, and Umbreon. Um, I was a little bit disappointed. I kind of wanted to get Ferrothorn, but I definitely messed up uh, and wasn't there on time when they actually started the draft. So I got a little bit screwed over, but let's go ahead and kind of break down the idea of the team. Uh, by the way, for those of you who are not interested in looking at any kind of team building process, on your screen you're going to see a timestamp. Uh, this will be your cue for where you want to jump to in the video so that you can just get right into the battle. Uh, now for those of you who are still watching, uh, again, this, these are the seven Pokemon that I was able to draft up. I'd say it's a pretty decent draft, all things considered. Um, I was definitely rushed a little bit when I had to draft Tapu Bulu and Rotom Heat, but I didn't want to fall behind in terms of picks and just like having to start all my Pokemon get taken that I wanted. So this is what we ended up with. It's not a bad team by any means. Uh, so my thought process was off the bat, I wanted to draft Torn T. Um, I should note that this takes place in the National Dex DLC format. So this is like post DLC. Um, so it's all Gen 8 mechanics. So there's no hidden power. There's no pursuit. Um, and there's the new moves that the Pokemon got. So anyhow, we've got Torn, um, and my idea behind this was, okay, first off, great speed control, fast Pokemon, incredible move pool, uh, now gets Nasty Plot this generation, so it can go on the offensive, um, and it's probably the best hazard control in the game. Like, there's really nobody that doesn't like Torn. Uh, Regenerator and Defog is such a great combination, you know, keep the team healthy, keep hazards off the field, uh, make sure that your switch-ins are pretty clean, so that was my thought with Torn. I next drafted Tapu Bulu because I wanted to have some kind of a wall breaker. Um, I've actually used Tapu Bulu in a previous draft and it brought me a lot of success. Um, very strong Pokemon and this generation it actually gets access to close combat, high horsepower, uh, gets play rough too, a lot of new great moves. So I was definitely excited to be using this thing. Uh, also drafted up Rotom Heat. Rotom as you know, for those of you who play OU, one of the best Pokemon in the format currently. Heavy duty boots, you can just switch in for days, take hits, pain split, defog, you name it. And you got everything with this Pokemon. Uh, great fairy resist for the team. And it provides a nice core with Tornadus where we can U-turn and Volt Switch. And that way we can get momentum to help get Tapu Bulu in and start breaking down the opposing team. Uh, we've got Aggron Mega. So Aggron was basically the stealth rocker that I drafted for the team. Uh, at this point in the draft, I had no steel type, so I figured it wasn't a bad addition, and I was quite pleased when I later found out that in its move pool, it now gets body press and high horsepower. And high horsepower is pretty important because typically, Agron like to run an Earthquake, but of course, Tapu Bulu Grassy Terrain is going to weaken that. We don't want to take the negative power down of that, so we can use high horsepower to basically act as a pseudo Earthquake. Obviously, it's only 95% accurate, but still a great move. Um... On top of that, it also got Body Press this generation, and that's huge when you're coming off of a base 230 like defense. I mean, just to give you guys some perspective, you know, no defense, neutral nature, you're going to be doing like upwards of 42% to max Fizz Death Ferrothorn, so it's pretty crazy. Uh, next on the team, we drafted Latias, and this pick was a little bit questionable, but I, d I definitely stand by it. I wanted a dragon for the team, and I also noticed that it could form a nice core with Aggron thanks to Latias getting Wish. So Wish would allow us to pass off Wishes to Aggron, heal it up, since obviously it doesn't have any access to recovery. Um, beyond that, Latias kind of acts as a couple different, you know, uh, pinpoints for the team. It can serve as an additional defogger to get rid of hazards. Um, it could be a late game sweeper with things like Calm Mind. You know, also getting great moves like Stored Power, uh, Ice Beam, which could be really dangerous, you know, in a draft format, especially Stored Power. Like if they don't have a Dark type, shit's a wrap. Um, What's also nice about Latias is that I got Aura Sphere and Mystical Fire this generation. Uh, and that's pretty significant because Mystical Fire, of course, being stronger than Hidden Power, really allows Lottie to have some deadly uh, coverage. Um, next on the team is Gastrodon. And this is one of my favorite Pokemon to use in draft format. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's a little bit passive, kind of sap away some of your momentum. But the typing is amazing. Only one weakness. Um, and Storm Drain is so good, giving you a water immunity on top of the electric immunity it provides with it being ground type. So 
Uh, drafted Gastrodon here, just kind of acting as the Volt Switch Stopper, not allowing my t uh, opponent to get any momentum. Uh, pretty standard defensive Pokemon, didn't really gain anything new with the, uh, you know, new generation, but, you know, it's good. And lastly, we've got Umbreon, basically the knowing fat wall that everybody hates. Wanted a dark type, you know, kind of put a stop to any opposing psychic types, things like that. And what's unique about this draft is that they actually allow you to use Baton Pass, but you just can't pass stats. So Baton Pass is great because Umbreon's a slow Pokemon, and if you go for Wish, which again, can synergize well with Aggron, uh, you're able to kind of use it as like a pseudo U-turn, teleport, you know, that kind of thing, where you can still keep up offensive momentum. And I really like that because, again, I kind of had like a Volt Switch U-turn theme going with the early draft. And Umbreon kind of fits into that core nicely because, again, you can use Baton Pass, keep up momentum, and keep putting pressure on the opponent. So with this out of the way, I actually wanted to go ahead and review the team that I built for week one. Uh, my opponent is somebody in the Discord. Their name's Jeff. I believe he's like on the council or one of the mods or something. Anyways, on the side of your screen, you're now going to see a drop down showing you the Pokemon that are on his team and the Pokemon that are on my team. So going into the matchup, and man, I really wish I had his team pulled up here in front of me. All right, guys, I apologize about the pause. So here you can see Jeff's team, and I really like this as a kind of um, temple here because you can see my team and you can also see his team. Uh, so he's got a roster of Mew, Manaphy, Ferrothorn, Aerodactyl Mega, Rotom Heat, Crocodile, and Clefairy. So right off the bat, I pretty much expected him to just bring the main six. Um, I really don't think Clefairy can do very much versus my team. Uh, and the biggest threat, the biggest thing that I prepared for was going to be that Manaphy. So Manaphy is a Pokemon that is notorious in drafts because it can absolutely just shatter the defensive cores that a lot of teams like to run. Of course, they like to have their grass, water, fire. Um, and Manaphy has a good enough speed tier to where it can just tail glow up and just basically sweep everything with like Surf, Ice Beam, Energy Ball. So definitely wanted to prepare for that thing. So starting off here, I've got Tornadus. And when deciding on these EVs, I figured, okay, uh, Tornadus will never be outspeeding Aerodactyl. So there's really no point to give it max speed. I EV'd it just so that it could beat Manaphy in terms of speed control. Um, and then I maximized our bulk with max HP. And the 28 EVs for defense, I believe my calcs, uh, I could live like a choice ban, Crocodile, Stone Edge. Um, so I figured that would be nice in case, you know, maybe uh, Crocodile is on the offensive rather than just setting up Stealth Rock. And then the remaining EVs were put into special attack to make Hurricane hit as hard as possible. Um, opted to use Taunt. And my thought process on this being that if ever Manaphy wanted to come in on Torn and try to use it up as set, uh, setup fodder, we could taunt it, prevent it from going from Tail Glow. And Taunt's also nice because it really shuts down his defensive core of uh, Ferrothorn, and also Crocodile to a certain extent, where we don't allow them to get up any Stealth Rocks or go for any you know annoying status moves, anything like that. And then of course we got Defog. Um, I changed this to like last minute. Well. Actually, I had Toxic. I changed it to Defog last minute before we played because I figured that Defog would be a little bit better on this Pokemon because what it allowed me to do is open up some offense for Rotom and Latias, which we're about to get into. So, Latias was the next member, and if you look at Jeff's lineup here, uh, if we just ignore that Clefairy because he's not bringing it, it's trash. <laughs> uh, the combination of Draco Meteor and Mystical Fire is going to be able to pretty much one or two shot everything on his team, and with a boost up, there's really nothing that can take a hit from this. Uh, so the EVs on Latias are actually awfully specific. So, again, really wanted to prepare for Manaphy because that thing could just run through the six if I was not well prepared. So I went ahead and I EV'd it such that I could come in on rocks if I'm at full. And I can go for Calm Mind as Manaphy goes for Tail Glow or if it's already Tail Glowed. Uh, and I would live even a modest max special attack Ice Beam. Uh, and I can actually kind of demonstrate that calc if I pull it up here. So as you can see, you know, obviously during the game, I uh, imported all of my uh, sets. Um, so here you can see that if I was to set up Manaphy at plus three special attack and I give Latias plus one spadef, we would be able to take the hit. And then from there, we could fire off a very strong Draco Meteor. Obviously, if you had no HP investment, that's going to be enough to pretty much always get the KO unless we get like an absolutely terrible roll. Um, and Mystical Fire was just there for Ferrothorn. Uh, definitely wanted to lure that thing. If Ferrothorn's gone, that's going to open up a door for Tapu Bulu or for my Gastronon and just kind of sit in and wall his entire team. So next we've got Aggron. And the idea with Aggron, uh, the EVs, they're pretty much just like standard Aggron, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I guess what's notable about it is that with the Spadef, if we're at full, we can take a plus three Surf and Manaphy and roar it out, which is why I have Roar actually, to prevent setup. Um, 
But beyond that, uh, we've got Stealth Rock, you know, put, set up some uh, passive damage on the team. And then Heavy Slam and Body Press are pretty much obligatory. I don't think there's ever going to be a week where I won't be bringing those two moves. Um, body Press there really just to hit Fairthorn and punish his Rotom Heat if it wants to try to switch in. Next we've got affectionately named Dong, uh, Gastrodon. <laughs> and this is definitely one of the weirdest sets I've run um, in a draft. So the EVs are there to basically take on um, Aerodactyl Mega. And the Spadef helps, I guess, with Rotom Heat. Now, the moveset, Scald, Recover, Toxic, and Infestation. Uh, the idea with Infestation is that I would be able to hit Fairthorn on the switch, and say he wanted to use Fairthorn as like a pivot to, you know, pull a double and get some initiative on me, Infestation is going to trap him in and allow me to get in Rotom Heat. And if you look at Jeff's team, his answer to Rotom Heat is his own Rotom Heat, which is not a good one. <laughs> so obviously that would allow me to get a free switch into it and just start wrecking havoc on his team. Uh, Scald is just there for obligatory stab and getting burns, and then Toxic is to whittle down any Pokemon on his team that, you know, stays in. Sticky Hold was kind of an interesting choice. Um, I definitely was a little bit fearful of Crocodile. I did not want, you know, uh, Tabu Bulu to take a knockoff, which we'll get into why when I go to that. Uh, so Sticky Hold is actually kind of a, it's kind of a heat tech, uh, allows us to not get knocked off, and it also avoids Trick from Rotom Heat. I was definitely worried that if he crippled Gastrodon as my defensive Pokemon with Trick, we wouldn't be able to uh, effectively take on Aerodactyl, so that's why I'm using Sticky Hold. And I kind of figured that he would expect Storm Drain, so he's probably not going to click, click a water move versus Gastrodon anyways. And truth be told, Gastrodon is not a response to Manaphy, it just dies to Energy Ball, so there's that. Next we've got Tapu Bulu, and this Pokemon put in so much work in the battle. Um, we're rocking out with Choice Scarf, EV just so that we can outspeed Timid, Max Speed, Manaphy. Again, I'm trying to control Manaphy, keep it under wraps as best as I can. Um, and with this moveset here, we can hit every single Pokemon on his team either neut neutrally or super effectively. Close combat there for Ferrothorn. We've also got Stone Edge for the Rotom Heat. Uh, and Horn Leash is there just to give us some additional recovery. So we're using Max Attack, trying to hit as hard as possible. And then the speed, again, allows us to outspeed Manaphy with the Choice Scarf. And that's actually why I didn't want to get knocked off, because if I lose my Choice Scarf, Manaphy could get out of hand. And then with the HP and Defense EVs, we're actually able to take a Mega Aerodactyl Wing Attack at full. Um, and would allow us to fire off a pretty much going to knock it out Wood Hammer. Uh, it does like 70% upwards to it. So the last member we've got is Rotom Heat. And I don't know, like with this Pokemon, I, I just felt like Umbreon wasn't really like the right pick. Um, and again, as I pointed out, you know, like offensively, Rotom Heat can definitely do some good damage to his team. So we're using Toxic specifically to try to snipe that Manaphy. And it can also, I guess, get some residual damage on his own Rotom or his own Aerodactyl if he wanted to, you know, be crazy and switch into that. Uh, we've got Nasty Plot to put on pressure. As I mentioned, if we get this thing on a Ferrothorn, he really doesn't have any defensive answer to it. So Nasty Plot's going to put on pressure, allow us to either Volt Switch out, get some offensive momentum, or we can just click Overheat and just start breaking down crap. So that was pretty much the uh, thought process with this. Didn't really need any speed since uh, it pretty much outspeeds everything that I wanted to outspeed and his other faster Pokemon will outspeed me pretty much no matter what I use. So uh, the defense here I believe was also for like Bandit Stone Edge from Crocodile, something like that. It, those, these EVs really didn't matter where they went. Um, it really wouldn't have changed much in the game. So. Uh, without any further ado, we're actually going to go ahead and get into the game. Alright guys, and we are here for the battle, so uh, before we get into this, I do want to clarify, this is indeed Gen 8. Um, I don't know if I made that very clear, uh, because all the Pokemon on your screen are from previous generations, some of them are not even in the game currently. Uh, this draft, again, is it, it, in anticipation of the DLC that is coming out, um, and even Pokemon that haven't been confirmed be coming back were available in the draft just with their original move set from Gen 7. So, without wasting any more time, this is my match here versus Jeff. And right off the bat here, we're going to have a lead of Crocodile versus Tabu Bulu. And I did not want to predict anything turn one. Uh, I'm just going to go right for the wood hammer, but I want to draw your attention to a very important <laughs> aspect of the battle that Jeff was not aware of. So, as you can see in the text log here, my grassy train is going to go off before his Intimidate. And what that should tell him as a player is that my Tabu Bulu is faster. Uh, for those who don't know, when two Pokemon are sent out, like turn one, uh, whoever's ability goes first means they have the highest speed stat. So this should have been a dead giveaway that I was Scarf, and Jeff's best play probably would have been to switch out. But he's not going to expect it, and I'm going to pick up a surprise KO on turn one, which is wonderful for me. Uh, and people in the chat were kind of, you know, giving him crap over it. 
Either way, he's going to go with the Ferrothorn. And as I mentioned in my team building, Rotom Heat's pretty much always going to be my immediate response to this. Uh, and right here, I'm going to expect to switch out because there's no reason you to keep a Ferrothorn in, obviously. And I'm going to go for a Toxic. Now, I'm going to Volt Switch out on the following turn, and Jeff is going to make an excellent play in response. He's actually going to throw off a Toxic, knowing that my Gastrodon is going to come in, and that's going to severely hinder its longevity. Uh, the good thing here, though, is that I know the switch is coming. I know Ferrothorn wants to come back in, go for Leech Seed, do all of its annoying crap. So I'm going to pull a double switch into my Rotom. And again, I really don't feel a need to predict. If you look at his team, nothing really appreciates an overheat. And, you know, say that Mew comes out, I can Volt Switch on it. I can go for Toxic. If Manaphy comes out, I've started to chip it. I'm st starting to put it in range of Latias, Draco. So there's really no reason for me to not just click Overheat here. And I think that I really want to say Jeff made an overprediction. Um, he really probably expected me to Volt Switch. But I'm just going to throw off Overheat and I'm going to melt this Ferrothorn. So right off the bat, I've already gotten rid of one of Tapu Bulu's answers. Uh, and that's making it look even more threatening. So right here, I do not want to take a Stone Edge or any kind of attack. I'm going to go out into my Gastrodon. And this is an excellent position for me to be in, because I'm very free to just throw off a Toxic. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss the Manaphy, so I'm going to be forced out into my Latias on the next turn. And I did not expect this at all, but uh, Jeff is using U-Turn, which works out for him wonderfully because he's able to put on pressure and get in his Aerodactyl. So I'm kind of on the back foot now. Going to have to go and sack off my uh, Gastrodon. And the reason I did this, there's no grassy terrain on the field. So let's say that on the turn he crunched, if he had gone for Earthquake there and I went to Aggron, I would have just lost my best response to Mega Aerodactyl. And I just really, at this point in the game, did not feel it was worth taking any kind of a risk. Uh, because Jeff is down, I feel like he has to try to make predictions, make plays to get back into the game. So I'm not going to allow him to do that. I'm going to make the more passive but safer play of just sacking off my Gastrodon here. Seeing that it's toxic, it's not really going to be able to do a good job of walling any of his Pokemon. This is going to allow me to get a free switch into Aggron, and I'm going to go ahead and Mega Evolve and get up my rocks. Uh, that's going to help put pressure on the Aerodactyl as well as the Manaphy when it comes in again. So right here, uh, I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, I thought maybe he would like go for a Nasty Plot. Uh, I did have Roar, but I didn't feel comfortable risking it. I didn't want maybe you know Aggron to take a Fire Blast or something like that. So I'm going to go out into Rotom because it doesn't look too useful at this point in the game. It's pretty much, you know, gotten the kill I needed. <laughs> um, as he's going to go for Taunt. And this is going to allow me to go for Volt Switch in the following turn. I'm going to be able to tank the hit and get in a teammate safely, which is going to be Tornadus. And my uh, my innovation, my tech, really pays off on this because I'm able to get off a knockoff here. Um, and then I'm able to pressure him in the next turn with Taunt, knowing that this Mew likely wants to go for a recovery move. And I'm going to be able to snuff the Roost, not let him go for it. And then I'm able to take the Psychic in the following turn and pick up the KO with a combination of Hurricane into Knockoff. Um, Manaphy's going to come back out. And at this point in the game, this is a really crucial turn. I don't know what the Manaphy set is. Um, it's revealed to be Scarf on this turn. <laughs> but I was thinking, okay, if this thing is like Leftovers, if it's a maybe Rindo Berry for uh, Tapu Bulu. Um, I, I just didn't want it to have any kind of item, so I clicked knockoff here as it's revealed to be Scarf, which is fine with me because I know that this Manaphy is locked into its attack, and that makes it a lot less threatening to my team. So I'm going to go up to Latias here, knowing that I take Surf very easily, and I'm going to expect some kind of a switch out, um, because Surf does not KO me from this range, and I'm going to go for Roost, and this works out great because Jeff's going to have to send out Rotom here, basically as a sack. And after running a calc, I saw that my spread, uh, Draco Meteor, is going to definitely KO this Rotom, even if it was max HP. So Aerodactyl is going get, to get to come back in here, and uh, I'm not going to play around with this thing at all. I'm just going to go hard out into my Aggron, and I really don't feel like there's a need to predict. I'm just going to play it safe. going to go for a Heavy Slam as Manaphy is going to come back out. And again, I want to play this as safely as possible. Um, I do not do not want my Aggron taking any damage because Aerodactyl can definitely, like, it could definitely sweep my team. If Aggron's gone, he just clicks, you know, whatever coverage move he wants and the game's over. Um, so I'm going to sack off Rotom here, seeing as it's outsped by both of his Pokemon. This is going to allow me to get in my Bulu here. Knowing that he's Scarf, I can freely just throw off a Wood Hammer. Something has to die here. It's going to be the Manaphy. And at this point, I guess I kind of made a mistake. I mean... Spoiler, I win the battle, but <laughs> um, I definitely could have just gone hard out into my Aggron. Um, but I, again, I don't know. I was really playing this as if it was like a ladder game and not as if it was a draft game. So I'm just thinking, okay, do not choke. Do not make any kind of silly play if he's like, I don't know, max special attack fire blast. I just, I don't want anything dumb happening. So I decide not to risk my Aggron. I'm just going to go ahead and sack off my Tapu Bulu. 
and that's gonna allow me to freely get in my aggron and unless he's like max defense max hp there's no way he takes his heavy slam even then i don't even think it takes it um so that's gonna be the game so good games to jeff uh that's a win for me under my belt and i still have two more matches that i need to play within this pool so i'm gonna be doing some more coverage of those when those matches come out and i'll see you guys in the next video peace